Hello. Welcome to Just a Dis. My name's Brian. We talk about Blu-rays here, and um, I'm going to do a little label spotlight. I'm going to talk about some titles from Kino Lorber that are all March titles. So if you're looking at stuff to potentially get from Kino this month, these are just a few titles that I'm interested in. Some of them I know, some of them I don't. But uh, all of them are intriguing in one way or another. So I'll try and make this relatively brief, but um, I'm going to start with this set, which is the one I'm most excited about. This is The Little Fugitive, The Collected Films of Morris Engel and Ruth Orkin, and it's a three-disc special edition. Uh, the Little Fugitive is one of my favorite uh, 50s like child movies, kid movies. It's about a kid who is basically lost on Coney Island, you know, during the day, like through happenstance, he sort of ends up there by himself. And it's, it's a very, I mean, it's funny and dramatic and the kid is really good. And it's just one of those movies that has a sort of raw energy and feeling to it that you don't see a ton in 50 cinema. It definitely feels much more independent than, you know, your average movie from 1953. But very memorable, you know, nice little coming of age story. What's great about this collection is it now has the uh, other films that uh, Morris Engel and Ruth Orkin did. This was previously released on a DVD set. And uh, those films are Lovers and Lollipops, Weddings and Babies, and a movie called I Need a Ride to California. So you're getting the, I think their entire filmography. I, I thought I looked them up and I thought that those were the four films that they did. Um, so to me, that sort of makes this a criterion, you know, box set, but not a box, you know, level collection, just a really neat uh, package that includes all the films from these filmmakers. And, you know, I haven't seen the other films, but I've heard um, from my friend Millie DeChirico, who programs TCM Underground, that she's a big fan of Lovers and Lollipops. And so I'm very excited to see that one. And I don't know anything about the other two. Um, uh, let me just give you the summation from the back here. It says, shooting on location in New York City and capturing intimate, intimate moments in the lives of the common person. Morris Engel and Ruth Orkin have come to be recognized as pioneers of the American independent cinema. Francois Truffaut remarked, our new wave would never have come into being if it hadn't been for the young American Morris Engel who showed us the way to independent production. Kina Lorber now presents the most comprehensive collection of Engel and Orkin's work on three Blu-ray discs, all four feature films, including the home video premiere of the 1950s, 1960s counterculture film I Need a Ride to California, newly restored by the Museum of Modern Art. Uh, it also includes short films, commercials, and two documentaries by their daughter, Mary Engel. So this is just a really wonderful package uh, that I highly recommend. Uh, you know, even just based on my love of The Little Fugitive, I know this is going to be a great set. You know, like, maybe, like, disc set of the year kind of material. That's what I've got in my hand here. That's what this feels like to me. So um, lots of good stuff. That's basically what's included. You can see the four films and then the documentaries and the commercials. And uh, it's stacked. It's a great little set. So that one definitely put on your radar for sure. Okay. Uh, next up we have a sort of, I think, lesser-known 70s cop film. This is from 1977. It is called The Choir Boys, as you can see there. Uh, it is directed by Robert Aldrich, who, uh, among other things, did The Dirty Dozen, uh, The Flight of the Phoenix. Um, he is, you know, one of those sort of man's man directors that made The Longest Yard, you know, just a really great um, workman director that I'm a fan of, for sure. And... This one is a comedy, I guess. Uh, it's based on a novel by Joseph Wamba, who did uh, The New Centurions, among other things. If you've seen the Stacey Keach, uh, George C. Scott cop film, The New Centurions, which is definitely not a comedy, um, I'm very curious to check out Wamba's cop universe as played more comedically. 
uh, in this case. And look at that cast at the top there, okay? Uh, it says that this is so a raunchy, uh, hilarious black comedy exposing the everyday lives of 10 metropolitan policemen. Charles Durning, James Woods, Lou Gossett Jr., Perry King, Randy Quaid, Don Stroud, and Burt Young lead a group of rank-and-file policemen from the Los Angeles Police Demar Department who look for ways to cope with the pressures of the job. Dubbed choir boys for their after-hour shenanigans, they meet for, quote, choir practice, periodic uh, relaxation sessions at which the group gets drunk, chases women, plays practical jokes, and reveals their innermost fears. This fast-paced, outrageous comedy gives an eye-opening glimpse into the lives of the boys in blue who follow a simple gospel. Work hard, play harder. So uh, you get an audio commentary there with film historians Howard S. Berger and Nathaniel Thompson and an interview with actor Don Stroud. And I should say, um, this also has uh, a commentary. I should have mentioned... Uh, Audio commentary for The Little Fugitive by Morris Engel, which I have heard, which was on the other Blu-ray, which I very much enjoyed. Um, okay. So next up, another one that I'm interested in here. This is Doc from 1971. This is a Frank Perry Western. Frank Perry, of course, the director of uh, The Swimmer, Last Summer, uh, you know, uh, Diary of a Mad Housewife, which has also come out from Kino and uh, a few others that uh, I'm a fan of. And this is a really interesting one. I've had another Blu-ray of this. There's a Signal 1 Blu-ray of Doc. Uh, and, in of course, you can see there it's Stacy Keach, Faye Dunaway, and Harris Eulin. Uh, Stacy Keach, of course, plays uh, the famous Doc Holliday in this movie. Um, this is a brand-new 2K Master, so if you have the Signal 1 Blu-ray, this will be a different transfer than that. Um... And it's kind of about, you know, Doc Holliday coming into Tombstone, you know, ready to help Wyatt Earp, and that's Harris Eulin there, uh, clean up the town just as they did in Dodge City. Uh, but to Doc's surprise, Wyatt Earp has changed from sort of a steely-eyed believer in law and order to a greedy opportunist who will do anything to be elected Tombstone Sheriff to ensure his victory, the unscrupulous unscru Earp enlists Doc's help in double-crossing the most vicious band of outlaws in the territory, the notorious Clanton Gang. Uh, it's a dangerous scheme that leads to the infamous showdown at the OK Corral, where a bloody slaughter transforms villains into heroes and heroes into American legends. Written by columnist Pete Hamill, who also wrote Badge 373, that is a cop movie with uh, Robert Duvall that I actually like, um, and directed by Frank Perry, and starring, co-starring uh, Faye Dunaway uh, as Katie Elder. Uh, also, this has a commentary from Alex Cox. Uh, I think I might have talked about him doing commentaries on Westerns for Kino previous to this, and uh, I really love that trend that Alex Cox is doing commentaries on Westerns. He He's a great commentator on any film, but I love that he has a particular fondness for Westerns, spaghetti Westerns specifically. Uh, not that that's what this is, but just... Seeing him talk about westerns is very enjoyable. Um, so that's Doc. Uh, another western, this one I don't know at all. Uh, it's got Rock Hudson and Dean Martin. It is called Showdown. It's from 1973, and it is directed by George Seaton, uh, who did, I guess, Miracle on 34th Street, uh, Airport, and a movie I really like called 36 Hours with Rod Taylor, where he's a... Well, I don't want to spoil too much of it. That's kind of one you should go into not knowing very much about, but it's a World War II espionage, uh, you know, not a cat and mouse in that it's action, but sort of a mental cat and mouse kind of movie. Um, anyway, that's George Seaton, and uh, so this Western adventure stars, you know, Rock Hudson and Dean Martin uh, as longtime friends who find themselves on oppo opposite sides of the law. It says Billy, that's Dean Martin, and Chuck Hudson have been buddies since childhood, but when Chuck got married, Billy took his cue and left the newlyweds on their own. Uh, Chuck's star shone bright as he distinguishes himself as the town's hardworking, honest sheriff, while Billy drifted into a life of crime. So you have Dean Martin as the outlaw and Rock Hudson as the 
you know, law and order sheriff. Uh, and it says the two friends paths cross. However, when Billy robs a train, uh, and it is Chuck who must hunt down his friend. Um, so begins a classic confrontation in the old West as Chuck is determined to catch and possibly help his old pal. And Billy is just as determined to not get caught no matter what the price. Uh, Susan Clark and Donald Moffat co-star in this thrilling action pack Western. And this has a commentary by Howard S. Berger and Steve Mitchell. Um, but yeah, no, I'm curious about this one. I am a big fan of both Rock Hudson and Dean Martin. Uh, I like Susan Clark quite a bit and, uh, I like the idea of old friends pitted against each other because that kind of leaves you leads you to a situation at the end where you don't know exactly. Usually you would think, oh, the sheriff will let him go or, you know, if the bad guy gets the drop on the sheriff, he'll just run away or whatever. But you never know uh, with those kind of characters. They can always surprise you. And I think that's one thing I like about this sort of story. So uh, definitely curious about this latter era Western for Dean Martin and Rock Hudson. Then I've got a couple um, Marty Feldman comedies. And this one I saw years ago, but I remember almost nothing about it. Um, but it's one of the most known of Mar Marty Feldman's movies. And he's actually the director of this one and the next one I'm going to show you. Uh, but this one has had a spotty home video history. I remember it was like not on DVD for a while, I feel like. And, you know, it just, it seemed like one that was pretty hard to see, you know, like you probably could have seen it on YouTube early, but, um, anyway, look at that cast. So you have Marty Feldman and Margaret, Peter Usinoff, James Earl Jones, Michael York, and, uh, it's a spoof. It says to, it's a spoof to end all spoofs as comedy legend Marty Feldman shatters the Gary Cooper French Foreign Legion classic, the last remake of, in the last remake of Bo Jest. Um, Set in England and Morocco in 1906, Feldman's, quote, remake mocks all the do-or-die extravaganza we've known and loved as he portrays Digby, identical twin brother to Michael York's, York's stalwart Beau Geste. Joining in the desert lunacy are a vast array of stars, including Peter Ustinov, uh, Terry Thomas, and Margaret as the boy's seduct seductive stepmother, and James Earl Jones as Sheikh Abdul the Disgusting. Uh, Feldman co-wrote, stars, and makes his outrageous directorial debut in this zany comedy, which, as the title suggests, threatens to end the whole romance adventure genre once and for all. The hilarious cast also includes Trevor Howard, Henry Gibson, Roy Kinnear, Spike Milligan, Avery Schreiber, and Hugh Griffith. Um, so that is quite the cast. I think these kind of spoofs can be very hit or miss, uh, but I like spoofs in general not the recent ones but the ones from this period and I do remember liking this and I do like Mar Marty Feldman I think he's you know a really talented comic performer one of a kind and uh, I remember liking the way that he put this film together so looking forward to this one uh, from 1977 I forgot how late this was um, it has multiple commentaries it has an audio commentary by film historian and screenwriter Alan Spencer uh, behind the guy behind Sledgehammer and who does some really great uh, trailer commentaries over at Trailers from Hell. I highly recommend you go check out his trailer commentaries. Um, and then it has an audio commentary by entertainment journalist and author Brian Reisman, as well as an audio interview with co-star Michael York. And it has the trailers from, from Hell from uh, Alan Spencer on here as well. And I know that he knows or knew I'm sorry knew Marty Feldman uh, at a certain point and has some stories about that I remember some of that coming up in one of his trailer commentaries maybe it was the one for this um, but I'm sure that commentary will include some of his recollections of knowing uh, Marty Feldman in what capacity he did so that is going to be worthwhile I'm sure uh, so that is the last remake of Beaugest and then the other Marty Feldman directed comedy in God We Trust. This is from 1980, three years later. Um, and this one is co-written and directed and starring 
Marty uh, Feldman, and it's a an audacious comedic look at organized religion. Uh, Brother Ambrose, that's Marty, is sent on a quest to come up with five thousand dollars to save his monastery. He travels to Los Angeles where he meets a con man, Peter Boyle, a prostitute, Louise Lasser, and a shady televangelist, a Andy Kaufman who sees Ambrose as a way to make even more money for his Church of Divine Profit. It's a laughter-filled quest to see if Brother Ambrose will succeed or be led away by the temptations placed in his way, co-starring Wilfred Hyde-White and comedy legend Richard Pryor as God. Um, I remember liking this one. I don't remember liking it as much as Last Remake, but again, I love the idea that Kino is putting out two of Marty Feldman's directorial efforts in the same on the same day uh and i like you know sort of being able to look at a director's work with more than one film uh, at a time if i can you know that sort of thing um so this one also has an audio commentary with film historian screenwriter alan spencer and also has another commentary by entertainment journalist and author brian reisman and another trailer from hell from alan spencer so lots more Good stuff, I'm sure, in those tracks as well. So that is in God We Trust, and then just a few more. And I don't, I know less, even less about these, but they intrigue me. Uh, this one is called Positive ID. It's from 1986, and as you can see, Julie Kenner, housewife, she has two names, two identities, two lives, and only one chance to get things right. I remember a VHS of this. I feel like, and I just can't recall anything else about it. It says Positive Idea is a chilling offbeat thriller that takes a dark and macabre look into the mind of an obsessed woman. A year after she was raped, housewife Julie Kenner, Stephanie uh, Rasco, still can't shake the horror of the attack. Her deteriorating mental state only worsens when she learns her attacker will soon be free on parole. Determined to get her revenge, the former model mother devises a unique and fascinating scheme. Using legal loopholes, she methodically creates a totally new identity, sultry barfly Bobby King, who will be the perfect bait for her attacker. She soon discovers, however, that the thin line which separates her real life from her fantasy personality is slowly being erased. The result is a striking, unforgettable journey into the world of the strange and bizarre that reveals the shocking truth about one's one victim's quest for revenge written and directed by Andy Anderson and co-starring John S. Davies uh, and Lauren Lane this one also has an audio commentary by entertainment journalist and author Brian Reisman um, yeah I don't know the sort of physical media history of this one but like I said looks intriguing to me uh, I like a good thriller and um, especially one where you know, identity is blurred and, and stuff like that. That can be, in, you know, really interesting to watch. So that is Positive ID from 1986. And then a couple more that I've just never even heard of. Um, Stiletto uh, from 1969. This is a brand new 4K master. And it stars Alex Cord, Britt Eklund, Patrick O'Neill, and Roy Scheider. Uh, in this... Co-star in this ultimate spellbinding thriller from Harold Robbins, the creator of The Betsy and The Carpetbaggers. Uh, Court Cesar Cardinale, Alex Cord, is a rich jet-setting playboy with a secret life as a professional hitman for the mob. He becomes a human target when he tries to retire and gets embroiled in an investigation of New York's mafia kingpin who had once saved his life. The stellar cast includes Joseph Wiseman, Barbara McNair, John Denner, um, James Tolkien, Olympia Dukakis, Charles Durning, Raul Julia, M. Emmett Walsh, and it's directed by Bernard L. Kowalski, who did Macho Callahan and Krakatoa East of Java. Um, this has an audio commentary by film historian David DelVal and filmmaker David Dakota. And those two, they, they do good commentaries, but they tend to sometimes go for both classic films and some, I don't want to say campy, but, um, you know, films along those lines that have a certain appeal in that way. And so I'm very curious when I see them on it, I know that's an interesting movie and a memorable movie. Maybe it doesn't fully work. I don't know, but that cover is certainly intriguing to me. 
uh, and the idea of this guy who is a jet-setting playboy with a secret life as a professional hitman for the mob, you know, sounds like something um, that somebody would make up, and I don't know, it, it just intrigues me. So this one, again, I've never heard of it, and I don't know how easily available it was prior to this Blu-ray, so intriguing stiletto and lastly this one cross swords which is a richard fleischer movie with another incredible cast and that's part of the reason i'm very curious about this one uh it's a brand new 4k master and uh you know it's a swashbuckling adventure comedy and again listen to this cast okay because this cast is just nuts You've got Oliver Reed, Raquel Welch, Mark Lester, Ernest Borgnine, George C. Scott, Rex Harrison, Charlton Heston, David Hemmings, uh, and Sybil Danning. Um, Cross Swords is a dazzling action film adapted from Mark Twain's classic, The Pirate, or, I'm sorry, The Prince and the Pauper. Uh, it says Tom, Mark Lester, a poor commoner, accidentally meets Edward, uh, Prince of Wales. That's also Lester, of course. Uh, and they are struck by the similarity of, of, of appearance that they have. After switching clothes as a practical joke, they are unexpectedly separated and forced to take on the other's life. Everything goes completely haywire when the king suddenly dies, leaving Tom to inherit the throne, while Edward must convince the people that he is really the new king of England. So that's a classic tale, you know, told by, you know, a good, again, workman director with a crazy good cast. Um, so... I'm curious, this is from 1977, also later than I would have thought. You know, this is the same year as Star Wars. This feels like a late 60s movie to me, or maybe an early 70s movie. But 77 is a little surprising, um, ultimately. So that's intriguing to me, you know, when a movie comes later than I would expect, you know. I don't know. Obviously, that brings some of these cast members into play, maybe. But I feel like any of them could have been in the film if it was in the late 60s. I don't know. But um, yeah, swashbuckling adventure comedy with that cast, I am curious. So uh, Cross Swords is another one that I'm going to check out this month from Kino. But um, that'll do it for this little February Kino highlight reel. Um, let me know if there's any of these that excite you, if you've seen some and enjoyed them. I'd love to hear your comments about them because, again, I haven't seen all of these and some I just haven't seen in a little while. So uh, thank you for watching and, uh, I'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye.